you a fan of this podcast? Do you wish there was even more juicy content for you to sink your ears into? Well, there is. You can become a premium member of this podcast for $5.99 a month and get full access to an archive of over 50 bonus episodes. Additionally, we release a bonus episode every single month. That's a ton of extra content, including my personal interior design diaries, extra tips, my talking about trends, and so much more. Additionally, you'll be keeping us on the airwaves each and every week because your premium membership money goes directly back to making this podcast amazing. Check us out at affordableinteriordesign.com, click on podcast to learn more and to become a premium member today. need a high-end designer or a lot of money to get a luxe look. Be your own interior designer. This is Affordable Interior Design, the podcast. Here's your host, Betsy Hellman. It is great to be back with you again yet this week. As you know, I've had a lot going on. And if you're watching the YouTube, you see me scratching myself a little bit. Well, so much going on. Uh... In the past two months, I've been a wandering vagabond. Well, I guess I started wandering July 24th. We moved out of our house and weren't able to move into our new house until August 17th. So we've been wandering and piecing things together and trying to maintain our sanity and trying to help our kids make a transition that is smooth and healthy and not eternally scarring. Well, while I've been doing all of that... Uh, I've also had to work, had to run my company, had to finish up clients, and uh, it's just been a lot. So uh, we were all waiting, all waiting for the big day, August 17th, and we would close on our house and move in, and then the people who lived here for 10 years just couldn't seem to get out in time, so they postponed and postponed the closing right up until the legal limit. Finally, they got out, they sold it to us, we moved in. And we all took a collective deep breath thinking, wow, now we're going to feel settled. Now things are going to be great. (sighs) Anything but. Anything but. I'll go into all the trauma drama details on the premium member podcast because this is a QA and a after all, and it's not just a design diary, even though at the beginning I always sort of treat a little bit like that, just so you can hear a little bit about me and follow a story. It's always one of my favorite things about other podcasts I listen to, so I figured I'd share a little bit personal with you. But all that is to say that it's been three weeks. The painters have completed two rooms, and we have many more rooms than that, I'm glad to say. Uh, I feel very fortunate to live in our new house, but nightmare. We live out in the woods, and apparently there's mice everywhere. There's mice in our house. And then, you know, my first inkling was the little cottage out back where I'm going to be working out of my new office. Uh, It was one of the priorities for the contractors because I need to be able to get back to work. Uh, We don't have reliable Wi-Fi in the house for three weeks because the walls are so thick that we're needing to install some sort of intricate mesh system. But in my little one-room cottage, I have amazing Wi-Fi and I really need to start generating some income. So I said, guys, let's focus on this first. So they spent a lot of time and energy in here. They ripped out wood paneling. They put in beautiful sheetrock. Well, during this process, um, Not much was actually discovered, except I was looking at the mechanical room and I was like, oh, there's some mice droppings in there, huh? We should probably see if there's mice because I'm not like super squeamish, but that is not what I want. I want to be able to have breakfast here and all that stuff, right? So I call the wildlife guy. The wildlife guy came today and he said, you know that smell that's in your cabin? I mean, he walked in and the first thing he said, you know this smell? And I was like, yeah, I mean, I'm in the middle of the woods, thought it was a cabin. Uh, He's like, that's squirrel urine. 
And then he continued to probe and look through the mechanical room. And indeed, we don't know what type of squirrels they are yet, flying or whatever, but it is the second mating season of the squirrel year. And if we don't catch them now, I'll have 30 squirrels living here, peeing here very soon. So let's just say it's been filled with turbulence <laughs> and it's been really rocky. Um, my poor son is having trouble making friends and he had friends since preschool at his other school. And now he sits at lone at lunch every day and doesn't have anyone to play with at recess. It's his first year of middle school. I had to bribe him. I offered him $10 to <laughs> if he would ask someone if he could sit next to them at lunch. That worked really well. He did, in fact, earn $10 and he has, in fact, been sitting with them. Do not um, write in about my parenting. This is not a parenting podcast. I do not uh, pretend to be a parenting expert, but now he has two friends. So I'm patting myself on the back and my wallet is $10 lighter. And I just wanted to let you know that, you know, we got so excited. I found the dream home. And just like when you find the dream guy, as you know, if you've been listening for a few weeks that I've been equating this with dating and marriage, well, you find the dream guy, you find the dream home, you move in together, you're so excited, and then you do notice maybe things you didn't notice before. <laughs> like, what's that squeaking? <laughs> Uh, yeah. And if you're watching this on YouTube, don't judge. None of the bookcases are styled. I still have two boxes left to unpack in this cottage. I cannot currently find any lipstick. Uh, that's just the way things are going. So I have chapstick, but I, even though I'm not feeling my best, not sleeping my best, not living my best, whatever, I am here with you trying to give you my best because the thing that has been sustaining me through these trials and tribulations our podcasts, all my favorite podcasts. I just wait for them to drop. I need somebody to talk to me while I make dinner in a kitchen where after three and a half weeks, I finally learned how to work the stove. I still don't know how to work the garbage disposal. So there's a different smell in the house, hopefully unrelated to squirrels, but definitely related to something rotten. <laughs> I'm going through it, guys. I'm going through it. Contractors in my house six days a week, children who are crying, Husbands who have no Wi-Fi for their video games. Wives who are doing, I don't want to say it all, but I'm overextended, <laughs> as you can imagine. But that does not stop me from meeting here with you and from answering your questions. And thank you for letting me rant. That is my official update. And let's get into the old mailbag, shall we? My first question comes from Marissa. Marissa's writing all the way from Newtown, Connecticut. And that is exactly where the wildlife expert was from. So I happen to know that that's 45 minutes away from my current location in Connecticut. So Marissa writes, hi, Betsy. It's been a while since I've written, but I still love your podcast. Congrats on finding your new home in Connecticut. We also moved to Connecticut a few years ago, and I'm finally getting around to decorating my master. My question is about our curtain rods. Is it okay to use different finials on different curtain rods? As you can see from the photo, the two curtain rods behind my master bedroom go right up to the wall. Yet the two windows on the other side of the room have more space. I'm considering putting more decorative finials on the side wall because there is space to do so, but only doing basic quarter inch in cap finials for the rods behind my bed. What do you think of having two types of finials in the same room? Any advice on mixing and matching? I don't even have to look at the pictures, Marissa. I mean, I will. And for those of you watching on the YouTube channel, you'll be able to see the pictures. Additionally, you'll notice that I'm looking off to the side because I have two monitors now. I'm so happy to be back to my two monitor setup. I can't even tell you. Uh, so I can see over here while I'm videotaping over there. And yes, I have thoughts, but like I said, I don't even have to look at these beautiful pictures. And I do think that your master, or you know, as we call it now, primary bedroom is coming along beautifully. But I would never, not ever, do different finials on different rods in the same room. You want me to be definitive? And I have that answer for you. 
The only time I can ever imagine doing this, and you know, I've been designing for 17 years, it's never crossed my mind to do this, is if it was a very eclectic space, super eclectic, and if each rod was different. So I wouldn't have two be the same and two be different. But like I said, I can't even imagine that working out. Typically, rods are not something that I want to draw a lot of attention to. I'm sure you've read my book, but in chapter nine, I don't really like decorative finials at all. I'll do a simple ball or um, sometimes something very simple like a beveled crystal, but I almost never do decorative finials. I don't like any spirals. I don't like them shaped like acorns. You know why it came up in my mind as acorns? Because we have these wooden rods in our current home. And the thing I love about our current home is it's helping me to grow up because everything that the people did in this home, whether they were designing or remodeling or replacing, they did very expensively. They were shopping at Waterworks for toilet paper holders. They were shopping at Restoration Hardware for hooks. They were using completely decorator custom drapery rods. They did not scrimp. Skimp? Scrimp? Oh, I don't know, guys. I don't know. I'm breathing in a lot of paint fumes right now. Uh, And my tendency has always been to save. Can I find something similar at a lower price point? It doesn't need to last me 25 years. I'm going to be moving soon. Or I have young children who are going to destroy it. Or X, Y, Z. This looks nice. I don't need it to be heavy. It's a hook in my door. You know, it's nice enough. I can easily get it on Wayfair, uh, even West Elm, right? But I feel like when I'm replacing things in this home, because each item throughout the home, whether it's a hinge, a hook, a doorknob, a faucet, was done so expensively. I feel like I have to rise to the occasion or it's going to look that much cheaper by comparison. So I have been shopping at places I would never normally shop because I think it's worth the investment to maintain what they did. There are definitely some choices. In other words, the chandelier cottage or the cottage in the chandelier, the sconces in the chandelier that I can tell are restoration hardware. I can tell were much more than I would be inclined to spend, but they just don't match my style and they are going to go. But those foundational pieces, I think it's so important to preserve. And I consider myself a steward of this home, right? And so I'm going to keep it up at the level I found it. I really don't want to degrade this home with any of those architectural finishes. And so I'm going to keep the rods that have the acorns. How do you like that tangent? And, you know, speaking of tangents, I've been working on some new client projects. I took a few weeks off because I was traveling and how am I going to meet with clients? So I took a few weeks off and also I was going to be very distracted. And if I would have known, I would have taken more weeks off. I would have, you know, I was still managing the firm, but I wasn't actively taking clients. But now that my house is a disaster, now that I am living with very little furniture, now that everything feels so uncomfortable, I find that it's really hard to give from an empty cup. So I have these really big presentations this week, like a three-room presentation and an overhaul package presentation, and they are high stakes and many items. And Normally, I'd be so excited, so energized, and instead, it's just making me feel depressed, and it feels like I'm giving to other people when I have nothing left to give. I'm going to try and change that mentality because these places are going to be fabulous, but I have a hard time focusing on other people's problems, including this mailbag, without completely equating it to my own problems because I am struggling so much right now in the home space, which is why people ask me all the time. They say, Betsy, you know, are you constantly changing out your drapes every season? Are you constantly updating your throw pillows or your rug for just a different look as the whim strikes you? And the answer is absolutely not. Unless my kids beg for new decals, our house is going to stay exactly the same because I have a firm foundation. I created a space I love 
And I do not plan on touching one little hair on its beautiful head because I'm so busy designing for other people. And I can do that in a way that's generous and inspired because I feel settled in my own house. And I'm realizing when I don't feel settled in my own space, when I don't even have, oh my gosh, I'm sitting on a slouch right now. Do you know what a slouch is? So a slouch is two twin mattresses from my daughter's day bed that she decided she doesn't like anymore. Two twin mattresses that are propped up in an L shape. So one is laying on the floor, one is resting behind it against the wall. And I sit on that to watch TV every night. And of course, that's not great for the herniated disc in my back, but the dog will not sit on the slouch with me. And the reason is because that back twin mattress keeps falling over and essentially crushing us like a little sandwich. And he no longer trusts the slouch. I certainly don't trust the slouch, but we don't have options because supply chain issues mean that our couch is not coming for eight to 12 weeks. Guys, welcome to my world of slouch. (laughs) And now it's time for a quick commercial break. Do you love this podcast? Do you wish you could learn even more? Well, we have an online class bundle. Our online class bundle is comprised of three online classes, Beautifying Your Home for Less, Styling Your Home, and The Fundamentals of Feng Shui. Each one of those three classes is between 30 and 45 minutes long and chock-filled with visuals and tips, things that will help you to style your own space or help out with other spaces. Additionally, with the pack of three classes, you get an autographed copy of my book, Affordable Interior Design. You get all of that for only $99. Once again, that's the three online classes as well as the book for only $99. You just go to affordableinteriordesign.com slash classes. Once again, affordableinteriordesign.com slash classes to buy your bundle today. And if one of those classes sounded intriguing, but maybe you already have my book or some of the other topics are not of interest, you can buy the classes individually at that site as well. Each class is $40. So head over to affordableinteriordesign.com slash classes to get your bundle or your online class today. All right, let's move on to my next question. Marissa, I'm sorry I made that question all about me. All about me is all I can think about today. Sorry about that. All right. Next question that I'm also going to try and make all about me comes from Dion in Henderson, Nevada. Dion writes, hi, Betsy. I love your podcast and book. I've been able to use a lot of your advice to furnish my home, but I am stumped with my media center and I desperately need your help. I have a beautiful off-white media center from Pottery Barn. The centerpiece has three shelves on each side, and they're adjustable behind glass doors. The side pieces have open shelving, also adjustable. Unfortunately, this piece has become an eyesore, a catch-all, instead of a showstopper in the living room. We have some electronic components, a cable box, a modem, even a hand vac on one of those shelves. I know, I know. Of course, we did add some random accessories. What I would like to know is how I can accessorize the media center so that it's functional and beautiful, decorated both on top and on the piece inside. My space is cream slash white with touches of blue and orange. Thank you so much for answering my question and helping the masses make more beautiful spaces. All the best, Dion. Well, Dion, I am happy to help. Let's take a look at this. So you described it very aptly. You've got some components behind the doors, and then those four doors that are in the middle are flanked by two open cubbies. And the open cubbies are accessorized with that shop vac you were mentioning and some other things. So I definitely have thoughts about this entire moment, and I really appreciate the picture because photos help me to give you better advice and help to illustrate the situation. Additionally, our listeners love to see photos. So if you're wondering what this looks like, head over to our YouTube channel, Affordable Interior Design, and you will see pictures of Dion's media cabinet. My advice, first of all, is that we do not put a lamp on top of a media cabinet or next to a media cabinet. And the reason is because when you're watching TV, you don't want to be looking at a light source. It is uncomfortable visually. So I would eliminate that lamp for sure. 
I don't love tchotchkes on top of a media stand typically, especially with a large TV right above it. I can see that you've wall mounted it and I can see that you have a strip covering the cords. I don't typically love a strip covering the cords. I would be more inclined to sink those wires into the wall. Now, if your walls are anything like mine, plaster, brick, you know, something really intense, it might be hard to build a channel inside the wall to get those cords to go down. In which case, I am open to you having a cord cover, but you need to paint it the same color as the walls. It should not be painted the same color as the trim. Definitely, that would be a first step. Also, your TV looks a little high to me, Dion. I can see a clip of a chair in one corner, allowing me to know that this is probably high for your room. The height of the TV should be the height of your eyeballs when sitting on the couch. Now, if your room is very deep, you can go higher. So that's in the case where I might allow it to be above a fireplace if it was a very deep room. But even so, you'd probably have to angle that TV down a bit. So my recommendation would be to lower this TV so that we see less of that cord cover strip and then, of course, to paint that. And then you'll have less room on top of the media unit that you feel obligated to accessorize because, of course, you wouldn't want to put objects in front of the TV screen, which would obstruct your shows. I never want to obstruct my shows, let's be clear, even though I'm currently watching TV from a slouch and my TV is laying on the floor. Now it's propped up against the fireplace. So, oh my God, guys, it's, it's really, it's really been a trial, especially because, you know, I love my shows and watching them on the slouch is really difficult. Um, let's go back to Dion. Dion, uh, in those open components, you definitely need to make it more of a showpiece. You definitely need to accessorize in a way that is decorative versus practical. So the the handheld back has got to go somewhere else. There are many places I am sure in your house for a handheld back and I would put that there. The second thing is, you know, moving some of those decorative objects down there. Now, if this is a space where you play games with your family or read books, I always love to incorporate functional items that I would actually use in the space and make them decorative by stacking them in an attractive way or styling them in odd multiples. We don't want to do anything too small and dainty because it'll just look like crap. And especially in these low cubbies, it won't really register what they are. Now, say I do have something like a lot of cords or controllers for the different video games. What I would recommend doing is um, putting baskets in there. Baskets that fill the space rather nicely and that hold a lot of things. I can see that you have baskets behind the doors, and I think that's a really good option as well, but it can be a way to accessorize the open shelving because behind the doors, you're allowed a little bit more grace, right? I'm fine seeing a modem. I'm fine seeing a cable box. Just make sure that the cords are wrangled and that they're in an attractive way, not just piled on top of each other, not just on the Hot Mess Express. And like I said, just wrangling those cords will be a huge help and, you know, interspersing them so that, you know, you don't just have all the technology on one side and the decorative items on the other side. So I might keep the technology on both middle shelves or both top shelves and accessorize the bottom shelves, making sure that I put unattractive things like cords and controllers and baskets and making sure that I incorporate some colorful items because I see that this room is quite colorful. Now, I may not do anything super fabulous because these cubbies are kind of small, kind of low, so I may not want to make things too bright because I don't want to draw a ton of attention, but you also don't want to make it look so neutral that it's not consistent with the room that has a bold colored chair, a very brightly patterned rug, and a highly accessorized bookcase. You don't want to make this look like the neutral afterthought. Speaking of afterthoughts, those are a lot of my thoughts. Guys, one of these days, one of these days when I'm fully designed, and I hope that comes sooner rather than later, I will stop talking about myself and spend more time talking about you. 
And if you have questions, I do hope you'll send them my way. Just head over to affordableinteriordesign.com slash podcast. Once again, affordableinteriordesign.com slash podcast. And there you can send me your question and I'll be answering it on an upcoming episode. And guys, if you're sitting there wondering, Betsy, what can I do to help you? You sound like you're really suffering. You're really going through it. I can see you on YouTube and you look haggard (laughs) and miserable and maybe a little delirious from the paint and epoxy fumes. Well, what you can do for me, guys, to support me in these difficult times is head over to any place where you listen to your podcast and leave us a five-star review. Those reviews really do move the needle and help us to get new listeners, and I would be so, so, so very grateful. So please head over to Apple, to Stitcher, wherever you're listening to us, and leave that five-star review. I would be so grateful. It would give me peace of mind, and maybe I'd actually get some sleep because last night we have all the windows open due to all the different fumes and toxins and off-gassing new rugs, and there was a huge thunderstorm. And we're on the top floor and we have no window treatments. And even through my blackout eye mask, I could see this lightning. It was practically over our house. I'm not sleeping. I'm not sleeping. All right, everyone. I hope you're sleeping and I'll see you next week. Bye. You've asked for it and we have answered the call. For years, you've been saying, Betsy, You're talking about all these great design concepts, but we can't visualize them. You're describing the picture that the listener sent in of their problem, and we wish we could see that picture too. After all, a picture is worth a thousand words, and I do my best to describe them, but there's nothing like seeing it for yourself. And that's why Affordable Interior Design, the podcast, now has a YouTube channel. Not only do we have a YouTube channel where you could see recordings and clips of these podcast episodes, we also have an Instagram, a Facebook, and so many other exciting things. You should check it out. Head over to affordableinteriordesign.com slash links. Once again, affordableinteriordesign.com slash L-I-N-K-S links. And when you go there, you will see links to our YouTube page, our Instagram page, our Facebook page, and more. Please check it out, follow and subscribe so you can see everything I'm talking about. A big thank you to our amazing producer, Catherine Heller, to Aton and the MBCR House Band, and to Affordable Interior Design, the sponsor of this podcast and the premier place to get an amazing look on a budget. Check out affordableinteriordesign.com. If you guys love the show, the very best way to support us is by spreading the word. Tell your friends or write us an awesome review on iTunes. So until next week, guys, thanks so much for joining us, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.